Hey guys, Dr. Lara here. Today I'm here with Barkley. Barkley is a 14 year old male uh, intact mixed breed dog. And he's coming in for a history of um, having difficulty uh, rising and kind of slinking in his back legs. If you come over here, Abraham, you can see he's not really holding his legs up very well. And so sometimes this might be, this could be associated with potential um, intervertebral back disease or spinal cord issues. This also could potentially be considered uh, associated with uh, hip dysplasia. That's something else that would be a consideration. And so with this particular patient, you know, after doing the exam, I don't really find that Barkley has any evidence of pain um, in his back really, um, or in his hips. And so then you start running into more neurologic diseases. And so one of the diseases that comes to mind would be something called degenerative myelopathy. Degenerative myelopathy is essentially the, the dog version of ALS. And we don't really know what the cause of this particular condition is. We do know that there are some mutations in some genes um, in the cells in the spinal cord and that kind of stuff. And there are some genetic tests that can be done. We had talked about doing genetic testing when we were talking about um, one of my other videos about um, doing genetic testing on your dogs to see what kind of breed they are. I didn't really care so much what kind of breed your dog was, but rather the diseases that they were more prone to. And so the so degenerative myelopathy is one of those conditions that is uh, something that will, can be tested for. University of Missouri does have a test that they can go ahead and do to check for patients that if they have the genes that actually have for degenerative myelopathy, um, but it won't necessarily give us a firm diagnosis. Um, what I would do is, and Abraham, if you want, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put Barkley back. So if you just wanna follow me, I'm gonna pick Barkley up. Let's see here. And, all right. Thank you very much. All right. We're just gonna put Barkley back in his run just so that he's comfortable. He's got good flooring. And if he wants to move, he can move. And if not, no big deal. I'm gonna head back to the computer screen. Don't move so fast, old oh, man. Um, so it is something that, you know, what, like I was saying before, um, it's really associated with either hip dysplasia. If he did have hip dysplasia, we would potentially look at, um, seeing some issues with his hips, which would be obvious on our x-rays. Um, today we were fortunate enough that the owner allowed us to do x-rays on Barkley. And so... That was something, when we come over here, we go to the viewer and we rotate this. He does have some hip dysplasia, but this is not the worst hips that I've ever seen by any means, especially for a 14 year old dog. So um, along speaking about ages, um, the typical ages for, or the range of ages for dogs developing degenerative male myelopathy or DM would be anywhere between four years old to 14 years old. It's typically seen in dogs between eight to 14 years of age. They have seen some German Shepherds as young as two years, uh, two years old uh, that have been diagnosed. Um, the breeds that are more common are uh, the Corgis. There's a lot of studies um, being done in Welsh Corgis um, their boxers are another one of the breeds. There are a few different breeds um, that are actually, we see this more associated with German Shepherds is another one. And so, um, you know, going along the lines of diagnosis, when I'm not able to elicit any sort of pain in his hips, nor elicit any sort of pain along his back, um, then we go ahead and start having to assume what the other potential diagnoses are. Um, when we do the x-rays on his abdomen, we can see over here, uh, there's no evidence of any sort of arthritis or narrowing of the uh, back, the intervertebral spaces. But the one thing is that I do notice an arch in this area right in here. And so I'm gonna wait for the radiologist to go ahead and comment on this. 
Whenever we do x-rays, we do, um, I want to say 98 to 99% of the time, we do send our x-rays out to a board-certified veterinary radiologist. Um, it's unfair for you to expect your, vet your general practitioner or veterinarian to know everything there is to know about veterinary medicine. So what I do is I surround myself with a team of experts who, once stuff starts to get outside my lane, I can go ahead and say, hey, the ball's in your court, what do you think? It's not so much about not being smart enough or but it's more about being smart enough to know when stuff is outside your comfort zone and then getting somebody else involved and so um, i would much rather have somebody who looks at x-rays all day long spent an extra three years in training to go ahead and review the x-rays versus somebody like me who even on my busy days i might look at a few x-rays a day these people sit there and look at x-rays all day long um, so I'll be curious to see if they have any sort of comment um, about what the backbones look like in this area. Um, the other thing is when we go ahead and we do x-rays and we send them out to the radiologist, it is something that we do go ahead and or I will usually talk to the radiologist and talk to them about what I've seen on my physical exam findings versus what they're seeing radiologically speaking. Um, that being said, I'm not seeing anything obvious that would tell me, hey, he definitely has intervertebral disc disease or a slip disc, and then that would lead me to believe that this is that condition. I think because I'm not palpating a whole lot of pain, I'm not seeing just completely destroyed or obliterated hips that this is tied to hip dysplasia. So I'm now starting to look for things that could potentially be maybe non-painful causes and usually uh, degenerative myelopathy is one of those particular conditions. Now in regards to the potential treatments for this particular condition, there are not a lot of treatments that we have to date that really show a lot of success. The biggest modality of treatment that we have as of right now would be physical therapy. Physical therapy we see tend to see dogs last a lot longer um, when they undergo physical therapy, underwater treadmill, that kind of stuff, to help keep their muscle masses up um, and engaged versus the dogs that don't receive any of that kind of activity or exercise, then their muscles just start to waste and then they can't really support themselves, okay? Um, at the end of the day, it is a heart disease because we don't really have a whole lot. I do wonder how much stem cells could potentially play a role in this particular area to maybe help regenerate some new cells, uh, but that's something that would be more along the lines of experiments or you know stuff that we haven't seen to definitely show concrete data that supports that treatment. Shouldn't hurt the patients. I would think it can only help, but it is pretty expensive, so it would be something that somebody would have to be really committed to that particular patient. Um, if you guys found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you know somebody who needs to watch it or wants some information, please share it with them. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself and be safe.